Welcome to Hot Flashes and Cool Topics, the podcast for women in midlife and beyond. At Hot Flashes and Cool Topics, we talk about anything and everything to do with midlife. My name is Colleen. My name is Bridget. And today we are going to do things a little differently. We have had a lot of requests from our listeners for us to kind of tell our own personal stories about menopause and what we've gone through, the changes that have gone through in our own bodies, how we have adapted to it. So we thought this would be a good time on Thanksgiving week to say we are thankful for going through menopause, but I'm still in it. So Bridget's more thankful. <laughs> and um, I figured I would ask Bridget some questions and then she can ask me some questions and we could just kind of have, you know, a lot of um, women and, and listeners say they, they love when we just talk. Mm -hmm. So this is what you're going to get. You're going to get an episode of Bridget and I chatting away. But before we start that, last year we didn't do this, but I like the annual tradition of asking Bridget on the spot about Neiman Marcus gift guide <laughs> estimates. Neiman Marcus has a gift guide every year. And in their gift guide, they have extravagant gifts, maybe 10 or 11 or 12, that I like to ask Bridget to guess on how much she thinks they might be. So I thought I would start this episode with asking Bridget about Neiman Marcus's gift guide, extravagant gifts, and how mm. much she thinks. Now I'm just pulling a few. I didn't okay. pull them all because they were just too depressing and silly. Oh, and yeah. even if I could spend that money, I wouldn't. Like really. Yeah. I wonder if anybody, oh yeah, I'm going to ask if anybody really does purchase. Oh, that's right. That's a little hint because we might have somebody coming on the show that could actually answer that. I forgot. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good so. call Bridget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's start off smaller. Shall okay. We? Okay. So one of the first gifts in the gift guide is the Vista Allegra personalized dinnerware and Portugal trip. So they will fly you to Portugal. You will create your own fine porcelain play setting for 12 people. Bridget, how much do you think that would go for? Okay, so you're flying to Portugal and you got it. And, so and I'm assuming hotel too. I'm, and I'm assuming first class. I'm oh, assuming yeah, first class. It is the extravagance. It, it is. It, it could even be a private jet, but it doesn't say that. And I think it would say that. Oh boy. Um, and I, golly, I don't even know about that kind of whatever. Is that like Allegra? Is that like some plates or something? <laughs> Vista I'd, Allegra. I'd, I'd, I've I'm never gonna go heard with of it. it. Yeah. I'm going to go with fine China. <laughs> I am too. And Crystal, I, I have never heard of that brand. Oh boy. I am going to say, um, $450,000. Now you overbid on I've that over one. Still... Overshot it. I, I said we were starting small. Okay. So. This one was 80,000. Oh, Eight. what a bargain. <laughs> the budget, well, the budget bargain basement price. Come on, <laughs> friends, let's go to Portugal. Come on. So you'll see Bridget and I in the new year. Having some <laughs> yeah, Portugal <laughs> on the fine Allegra Vista, China. Okay. All okay. Right. So I figured we'd start small and move up. Well, I really, okay. John says I overshoot it a lot. So I, I did. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this one, I thought I saw the price first on this one. I was like, what? I could get one so much. And then I read the whole thing and I was like, oh, okay. Okay. So next in my choices is the chalet stay in Jackson hole, which, you know, you get to ski and Jackson hole is gorgeous, but you also spend a day on the slopes with Lindsay Vaughn. Oh, okay. that was the part I skipped when I saw the price. I was like, what the heck I could get a, you know, <laughs> A, BR, a VRPO for a lot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Lindsay Vaughn. Okay. Yeah. I've been to Jackson Hole and I have not skied there. I went in the summer, but. Well, you need to buy this one. And this okay. is in the price line. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. So you're leading. Okay. That's it. Jackson yeah. Hole Chalet. Any I'm, airfare? I did not. I didn't actually have the catalog to be totally oh, honest. Oh, okay. But okay. I'm going to assume it's the full package of travel, okay. like the flights. So, yeah. Um, I don't know see? if they include food. That's a very Oh, they should. I can't say yes or no because so it's going to be more than $80,000, $110,000. While closer, it's $235,000. Jeez. I mean, and I wonder how much of that what? Lindsay Vaughn gets. I know. I'm like, I would, I, I'm taking my $80,000 going to Portugal. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Oh my gosh. So I'm writing these prices. So the next one's going to be higher. Okay. Exactly. I'm, I'm trying, okay. I'm trying to help you by just kind of inching up. Okay. So next on the inching up, and again, there are other ones, but I just picked a few. Okay. Next in line is the Barrett Jackson. I don't know Barrett Jackson, but Barrett mm -hmm. Jackson custom GMC Hummer EV. Oh, oh God. So it's a pretty Hummer. The picture looked pretty. I'm not a big Hummer fan, but hey, I didn't even know they Hummer... made those anymore. I thought they quit making. I guess they make well, special this is custom. Ones. Yeah. This oh, it's is custom. custom. It's special. And oh. if GMC wants to, you know, sponsor the show, I love Hummers. There you go. I'll just <laughs> completely change my tune. But no, it's a Barrett Jackson again. Um, I have no idea who Barrett Jackson custom GMC Hummer EV. Bridget, what's you? So it's got to oh. be more than the and last the one. 200 something thousand. So 35,000. Okay. So um, I, I just reminds me when my, um, I have a brother-in-law that worked for in car dealership type things. And he brought a Hummer in one day. And my nephew, when my daughter was about nine, my nephew was about seven. He's like, let me take you in here and show you all its best features. And everywhere that it said Hummer was its best feature. <laughs> he just pointed to everywhere. <laughs> this right here is its best feature. It was every, and she was nine and she knew that was crap. <laughs> so she just knew, she's like, Smarter. you're full of crap. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So this Hummer and you know, they're expensive anyway, even whatever, 10 years ago. Okay. okay. I'm going to say 370,000. Well, close. We're just a little jump up. It's 285,000. Oh, okay. Okay. So, all right. I'm, I'm overshooting this because I'm thinking it's going to That's all right. Better but, too much. But it, it's just the Hummer. There's no dinner. There's no food. No, there's no clothing. <laughs> No, inside. No, um, yeah. No actor pulls up in it. In it no, no chauffeur, nothing, yeah. nothing. Okay. No, just, just the $285,000 Hummer. So, well, you know, honestly, some of those real expensive cars, that's actually not bad. Like if you were to get like, you know, like a, I don't know, a Bentley or a, uh, one of those, what are those cars called? A, I don't know, Lamborghini or Bugatti. Maybe. Okay. So, so that's we have, actually, that's a bargain. <laughs> that's a bar two bargains. For John this yeah, year. Yeah, I'm there sure. He's such a Hummer guy. I know that that would be his thing. All right. Three left. A renewable luxury experience. So this is a three-part sustainable luxury shopping experience with experts from Neiman Marcus and Fashion Pile. With this, you get a $100,000 gift card to spend during the shopping experience. So it's a renewable luxury experience, three-part sustainable luxury shopping with experts from Neiman Marcus and Fashion Pile. I am so confused by this because a $100,000 gift card, aren't you already paying for that? What the heck's that? That's inclusive, like, they okay. give you a hundred thousand to spend. So you're really only spending, I guess, the remainder on the experts. And okay. I get, I don't have the list. Of okay. So yeah. And, and you said renewable and I'm like, does that mean you have to renew it? Or I think they, they mean sustainable. Like they mean a sustainable. Oh, oh, energy. okay. I thought they meant like renewable. Like, Hey, we'll give this to you this one time. Renewable energy. <laughs> you can renew it if you want to with your own money again. And that's going to be more than 285. Mm -hmm. <sighs> See, you would have undershot this one. Yeah. Okay. 310, 310,000. 345,000. I am, I'm going to I'm gonna have to find out. About I know. That. I'm going to have to. I'm trying yeah. to check. Yes. Okay. Two to go, Bridget. Two okay. to go. You ready? Yeah. Okay. With my paper. <laughs> this one is a private party at the, the Apollo. And you get dinner and dancing on the stage. Now, unfortunately, I didn't check how many people can oh. be there. So while you guesstimate that, I'm going to see if I can find the answer. To that. Okay. And also, if you're at the Apollo, you should have some really great entertainer there as well. They didn't right. say that. So you would think. You um, would think. You would think. And now I'm looking it up. So <laughs> you keep thinking about okay. that, Bridget. Okay. Here, it's, a, it's a roaring 
20s okay. party by Bronson Van Wyck. Experience the excitement of the 1920s with an exclusive throwback soiree by party planner extraordinaire Bronson Van Wyck at the iconic Apollo Theater. Okay. Huh. Wow. Oh, I would like save that one till one of my kids is getting married. That's going to be the wedding reception <laughs> right there. You know yeah. what? I, yeah. I better you, from experience. I'm coming. I'm coming with you. Okay. I'm, yes. I'm excited to this one. Yes. Um, wow. So that's oh. going to be. Oh. And Bronson Van Wick will donate 50000 to the Apollo, Apollo Theater Foundation supporting preservation of the historic venue, if that helps. Okay. Um, okay. 19, so 20 people. 20? Only, that's it? Only 20 people. I can't even invite like all my siblings and their spouses. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's just me. You're just no, inviting my just husband and I. just Colleen and Randy and me there and John. Go. And and, and yeah. the kids you can and the them. kids and that'll be it that'll that'll do it. <laughs> so and I invite your mother. So um, let's see. Um, gosh, things are expensive. Um, I'm going to say four hundred twelve thousand dollars. Very close. Three hundred ninety-five thousand. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay, Bridget. For this last one, we're taking a little bit of a jump. So get ready. Okay. We're going up and we're going up steep. Okay. So this would be the Muggle, and I'm hoping I'm saying this right, M-U-G-H-A-L, the Muggle Diamond Heart, which is a 30.86 carat diamond mounted on a Harry Winston platinum setting. So with the purchase of the Muggle Heart Diamond, Neiman Marcus will donate $300,000 to the heart of Neiman Marcus Foundation, supporting Boys and Girls Club. Okay, you get the diamond, and uh, and that and that's and that's it. Just that humongous diamond, thirty point eight six D color, internally flawless, oh, type two A, oh, expertly God. cut diamond in a captivating work of art. Oh my! It's the Muggle Heart, so it's in the shape of a heart. Okay. So I'm trying to think how big like the Hope Diamond was. It's like 60 something carats. I don't know. Oh my gosh. So you, yeah, this is going to be a big uh, jump. This is going to be a big ticket. Because it's Harry Winston too. Oh my goodness. I'm showing Bridget the video. Now I wonder if more than one people want that diamond. (laughs) I mean, wonder if like, you know, then I'm sure they have other options. Okay. Because if it's the only one. Okay. I'm going to say, um, uh, I am going to say $22 million. Well, something I would probably say, because it's that big, <laughs> it's 6.1 million. Oh, so you can buy you three, three of, of them. them. <laughs> there I go. I will buy three of them. Yes. Just buy it and wait until your daughter gets engaged and then go, honey, here. Here. Like, yeah. Like, oh my God. Man, and who does, my daughter doesn't even like rings. Yeah. Like I got her. I got her this ring. This one. I'm wearing it. She's like, I don't like rings, mom. And I'm like, (laughs) watch how fast she changes her mind when she gets engaged. Oh, I know. I know. Okay. That was wild. That was wild. I remember. Yeah, a few years ago, maybe with COVID, they can't. Well, they did go to Portugal, but I remember. We, I think we might have just skipped it, actually. Oh, <laughs> well, we did last year, but like two years ago. Yeah. They, uh, it, I remember one involved all these uh, Christian Louboutin shoes and uh, like plane ride and all this stuff. So, wow. yeah. I, I mean, if you guys want have some time on your hands, go online and check out Neiman Marcus Gift Guide 2021, and they will have an extravagant section. Oh and if gosh. you feel the need to send us one of the gifts, you know, and I, we will not object. We and will, we will send you a mug. We'll send you a <laughs> mug, you. not a muggle diamond or a mug, yeah. whatever, but a, a mug with zero diamonds in it. <laughs> But our face is on it. We'll so. be on it. Yes. <laughs> Diamonds in the rough. That's what it would be. Yes. But um, anyway, getting back on track, Bridget, I noticed um, in your experience, huh, and, and really fast, there was no transition for this. Are you a mall cop? Because you just took, you a, just segue. took a segue. <laughs> and yeah, not that even somewhere. a good one. Oh, it was, I heard that on another podcast. I was done laughing with a comedian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I know that you are postmenopausal and you had yeah. your issues with menopause, but you had some issues this year 
yes. with your, yeah. your period making an appearance. It so did. who tells the yeah. listeners? So something? I had been on uh, bioidentical hormo- hormones. And I would go every few months to get my blood work checked and get the prescription renewed. And the, uh, it's actually a uh, nurse practitioner there said, hey, um, do you want to try the pellets? And I was, I didn't really know all of the things about pellets that we have since learned uh, talking to a lot of experts. And I was like, okay, sure, I'll do it. And, you know, they had to cut open my hip and put the pellets. It was testosterone and estrogen, but progesterone was still being taken orally. And it was fine, but I was still going to have to go in every four months and cut a little cut, which, you know, when you get that little cut, then you have to wear the steri strips. You have to watch it when you shower. You can't get in the pool. You can't get in the hot tub you know, you have to, you can still exercise, but I thought I wanted this to be easier and this really isn't (laughs) any easier. Um, And then we talked to some doctors and when they talked about pellets and how the testosterone levels just were out the way. I think Lisa Larkin was the one. Yes, Dr. Lisa Larkin, when we talked to her and I believe we talked to another uh, person that we're both just saying, guys, you don't want to do these pellets. So I I said, okay, I'm I'm not doing it again. And I went to a new gynecologist and I talked to her and I really like her, uh, but she said, okay, I I can't prescribe to the um, bioidentical, but I will put you on Primarin. So she looked at what I was on, on the bioidentical 1.25, and she did that for Primarin. So I started taking my Primarin, fine. All of a sudden started having periods again. And I mean... I, I was having them like every two or three weeks. So I thought this, this is too much estrogen. And so I called the office and we have lowered the estrogen again. And it is, um, it's no more periods for about two months now, but it was ridiculous. It was like every two weeks. I was That's I, crazy. It was crazy. And I was really getting nervous because you know, I was like, am I estrogen heavy after reading all the books that we've read and I would, could feel bloating in my stomach. It was almost like going through the PMS again, when you were having your periods again, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm bloating again. Something's up. It, it was, it was insane. So, it, and it really scared me. And after talking to Dr. Sherry Ross and Liz Lister, Dr. Liz Lister, I'm thinking the oral um, estrogen really may not be for me after talking about how it passes through your liver. So I really, Mm -hmm. I want to look into either a patch or um, look into the creams, the estrogen creams, or honestly, I'm wondering, do I need estrogen any longer? Um, So I'm going to have to see about that because when I did start having the hot flashes, like I've had them forever and I had them horribly, the, before I started on the bioidenticals, they first only put me on progesterone. When they put me on progesterone, I quit having hot flashes. I quit having right. night sweats. So the progesterone itself was really helping. Uh, they were waiting because I wasn't a year out of having my cycle. So, yeah. So now, what was your age when you really like the, your 12 month anniversary? I was, I think 47, 47 or 40, 48 maybe was my 12 month anniversary. Yeah. So, so think about that. You're, you guys know our ages. Bridge is going to be 54 in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So think about having your period again after how many years? You well, know, it's almost yeah. seven years. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's like, uh, yeah, it, it was a freaking You're like, nightmare. what is that? I had to go <laughs> scrambling through my daughter's bathroom cabinets to see if she had any anything stuff. left there. Any, any stuff. stuff. Any tampons or pads left there because I was like, Oh my God. I think it happened. The first one came along when I was on vacation with my sisters and my younger sister was still having her cycles, you know, so at least there was something there, you know, (laughs) I was like, all right, what is going on? You know, what is happening? Um, So it is a really scary thing. Uh, Maybe I wish now that I had never gone off the bioidenticals because that seemed to be a really great um, and you go back, would you consider I, going I, back? On I them? would consider going back, but part of me is also wondering, do I need to be on this anymore? 
you know, um, they're all, you know, Liz Lister really says it's great and, you know, taken the right way. It's really great. And, and I do, you know, I know like heart wise, it could be really helpful energy wise. So I am reluctant to go off of it, but you know, it is, it's really a weird thing, but I am really thankful. There's so much more available to us. Um, but it's hard to find it. You know, right. had we not done this podcast and really sought out people that were, are really knowledgeable about this, I wouldn't know about it. So, right. yeah. So calling. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So what, you know, are you still oh, monthly? God, yes. I mean, no. are you, no, you're I not think monthly. I'm okay. At, no, I think I've reached the point where I'm now, I know I mentioned when Bridget and I were away on a business trip, I mentioned that I hadn't had my period in about two months. And when, you know, like a week later, I got it, of course. And I haven't gotten it since then. So I'm closing in on like a month and a half or something. I think it's going to be where I get them every few months. And I'm 54, guys. At this wow. point, I don't want them anymore. Why do I? I've had an ablation. So I had really heavy periods most of my life. Um, and semi-irregular until I had children. And then it went regular. Don't ask me why. But they've always been really heavy. So my doctor was like, let's get an ablation, which is a procedure you do where they literally burn the lining of your uterus so that you don't get a period anymore. What I didn't know was about 10% of women. Now I think it's a little higher, but at the time I did it, it doesn't work for. Didn't, I fell into, I should have played the lottery with those odds because I continued to get my period, like literally the month after. So at this stage, I'm kind of in that, um, I don't know. I, you know, it's like being a teenager again, when you weren't sure when you were going to get your period. So you have the sweatshirt thrown in the back of your car, just in case you have <laughs> to, to wrap, wrap it around. around. Yes. Oh. <laughs> um, and then coupled with the fact I, I'm very honest to the listeners that I'm on um, anxiety medication. So due to insurance and Bridget and I have this whole thing about health insurance for women, but that's another topic. Um, I had to switch my medications, which I haven't switched in six years. So I went with the closest medication that had active ingredients to um, the one I was on. However, I have a hypersensitivity to medication. It's really interesting. You can have a genetic test done that shows what you can take, what you can't take, what your body will absorb. And my body has a hypersensitivity to like anything that's um, generic. Or if I take like children's doses of medications, like I can't take big people doses for some reason, it doesn't work huh. in my body. So I'm on this new medication and all of a sudden, hello, night sweats are back again in my life. Oh my and gosh. Like, so I was getting night sweats for a while. I started taking evening primrose oil, which really, really helped. And then I started on a baby, half of a low. So you, whatever the lowest dose is, I take half of it. And I am having, I had to change my pajamas twice last night. No. I'm literally sweating through my poor husband. I can't imagine <sighs> what the sheets are like. And that's where I'm at right now. So my periods are getting irregular again, but my night now sweats are back with a vengeance. Oh my gosh. And that does drive me crazy um, that the decisions, and I don't know how that all works with insurance and what they decide yeah. they're going to cover and what they don't cover. They don't really, I just don't feel like they go through an individual person's what's oh, happening to them. No. They, I, I don't really know how it works, but it's like, it's like they take, um, the, uh, I don't know, a sample or something or a study and they just mm -hmm. do whatever's average and decide that's going to be the best medication for you. And uh, that's, and we horrible. are not average. No, we are not average. For the two. Well, and I really <laughs> was frustrated because I've been on the medication for like six years. It works great. I've had no, you know, my body has adjusted to it. And they were just like, well, no. And I appealed and they were like, mm, still no. And I said to my, my husband was like, you can pay for it. I, I the difference between $11 and $450 a month is ridiculous. Like you yeah. can't justify that. And, and especially now that you're supposed to be so aware of people's mental health and, mm -hmm. you know, they're not at all aware. I mean- Oh, that, that is horrible. I can, I, I just can remember, you know, going through that with one of my children trying to get their medication and how well one worked and one didn't, but they insurance. And we did end up just paying out of pocket right, for the other one because of their child. And yeah. And, and it's, it's horrible. And, you know, there's a lot of people that's going to be a huge difference to whether right. they have enough 
money to pay the bills and, you know, pay their electric bill or put food on the table. That is a it big It really is. It's a difference between your mental health and yeah. feeding your family. And that's ridiculous. It so is. It's horrible. Bridget and I really want to talk to some people in the insurance company world. about. Uh, no. Stuff. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I have heard this. Um, yeah. I've never had to do this myself, but uh, something happened to my mother-in-law when she had surgery. She had um, her knees replaced and she uh, was, she went to, she was doing very well after the surgery and they were going to send her to this better rehab facility, but they said, oh, she's doing so well. The insurance said, no, we're going to send her to this less expensive rehab facility. No one told her to get up and walk around. So she didn't, she got a blood clot in her lungs. So she got a blood clot. The ambulance is coming to get her. The the ambulance driver said to her, the next time someone makes this decision about you, ask what the medical background of the person that is making that decision about you is. A lot of times there isn't a medical background for the person that made that decision. And that then they'll, you know, do that. You may want to ask the medical background of the person that made the decision Look, I'm about taking your, notes. Medicine. Yeah, yeah. At this point, I'm already switching. I'm hoping it's just. Yeah. You know, but it's like replaying menopause. I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't no. had menopause in a couple months. Now they're back. And you know, women can totally relate to this. You wake up, you're drenched, you're cold. I have a big fan on the side of the bed. So I don't want to get out because the fan's going to hit the cold cheeks yes. and the cold. So I just yeah. sit there and shiver for a good 10 yes. minutes. Then I'm up. Then it's yeah. 3 a.m. I'm up. I change my pajamas lay right back in the wet bed. Try not to wake your spouse yeah. and grab your phone. Yeah. There you go. And yeah. all of a sudden it's TikTok at 3 a.m. Yeah. Watching, watching, watching TikTok. <laughs> no wonder those cat videos have been showing up on the TikTok. <laughs> it's me. Yep. It's yeah. Cat cat all of a sudden we're getting all these cat videos on our TikTok. <laughs> but no, yeah, it's awful. Right. Those in those days when I was going through that, I was teaching. And it, it was, I didn't know what, a, I think I've said this before. I didn't know there was a name for night sweats. I didn't know what was happening. And another teacher started talking about, oh, the night sweats. And I'm like, that's the name. It has a name, <laughs> you know, because that is happening to me. And my hair would get soaking oh, wet. Yeah. Isn't it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your neck, my hair, my back. And that's how, when I would get hot flashes and I've talked about my first hot flash that I remember. Um, oh, I was in Hilton Head with my daughter and her friend and we were shopping and I I was like, oh my God, I'm going to faint. I'm going to faint. Something's happening to me. I'm breaking <laughs> out happening? in the sweat. And <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, 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 I've got to get something to eat. I've got to get something to drink. I've got to get a Coke. I'm like trying to get to this bar, you know, <laughs> like just to get a Coke. <laughs> and, and it was a hot flash. And like my hot flashes, it's like, they start, they go, I can feel the sweat dribbling down my uh, back. It, it's just the closure wearing everything, you know, you, ladies, you don't want to move. Can you feel it? Can you oh my God. To and then that, then that's kind of when the, um, when I made my move here to Nashville from Kentucky is where things really started to change. Um, mm-hmm. I've gained probably 20 pounds since I moved here from, oh, yeah, from Kentucky. Too. Yeah. And a lot of it was, if I barely moved, I broke out in a sweat. So I wasn't moving. It's like, okay, you get up, you go shower. I mean, I was exercising still, but I get home, I'd shower and, you know, you'd want to be ready and fresh for the day. And if you, if I swept my floor, I was drenched. If I did, so I was like, sitting there like this <laughs> and, and then sitting I was immobile in a immobile. chair and, and then I was still I would still just like for no reason you know just start sweating all over my hair just everything my clothes were drenched and and I know I've talked about going to the gynecologist here and her not saying oh you're too young I think it was 46 you're too young and I thought well my mom was 43 and you know, I, I, my older sister was like 43. So I don't think I'm too young. And she did the follicle count and it was indicating that, yes, I was perimenopause or definitely almost menopause. When I went to the clinic that did my bioidentical hormones, they actually said, well, even though you had your last period like 10 months ago, 
your levels indicate that you are in menopause, even though it hasn't been 12 months. So, but she still held off on the estrogen until it had been a year. So honestly, they were, uh, other than, you know, pushing the pellets on me, I felt like I got a better, I don't know, I was listened to better. Right. That and that's clinic. what women want. To, yeah. We want to be heard because uh, similarly, I, I've always been pretty much the same weight between five pounds, five, six pounds since I was much younger. And then when I moved here, maybe it's Nashville. I, I, <laughs> they, I think they just have weights in their water, just yeah. weights, you know, maybe and you just, just drink all the, the fried water. food. It's all, and it just like something in the air just gets in your pores and causes weight. <laughs> There must be fat in the air coming down with the rain and gets in your pores. No, I'm I'm all for that. I'll blame that. No, but I had gained 25 pounds, which. Oh, she is tiny. She is still But I was heavier. I was heavier than when I was nine months pregnant with my kids. No, I felt like that the same. The the nurse said, or the doctor, excuse me. The doctor said to me, well, it's just menopause and lose the weight. And I was like, okay, well, that's my problem. I need to just lose the weight. I looked at her like, if it were that easy, the everybody time- would, nobody would be overweight if it was that yeah. easy. And yeah. I really resent, like I walked out of there, not, well, first of all, I thought I swore that the, the weight, the scale machine, was wrong. The scale was broken. I swore this. And the poor girl was like, no, it's not honey. <laughs> and I'm like, no way. But I also felt like number one, no one heard me. And number two, I don't want to lose the weight. Like I resented the fact that I was going to have to lose weight because I reached a point in my life where if I want that glass of wine and I want that cheesecake for dessert, I want it. So it was finding that balance mentally of feeling better of exercising for the benefit of your mental and your physical health. And I've dropped a lot of it, but I still resent the fact that no one said, okay, menopause, you need to try these different tricks because it's not the same. You can't eat the same. You can't diet the same. You can't exercise the same. And I think that was one of the triggers for Bridget and I to start this podcast because we weren't really told you need to change your lifestyle a little bit, not necessarily in the worst way, but if you're exercising, if you're going to boot camps, it just doesn't work anymore for your body Mm -hmm. at this age. You need to target your strength training and Pilates and core strength, and you need to do cardio mixed with strength training and eating. You just have to eat differently, but nobody tells us. No. And you know, I have learned from this podcast too, how much sugar, and I love sugar and I love sweets and it does cause a lot of um, issues. It does. So what I'm trying to do is just not eat it a lot. (laughs) You know, like when I do want that cheesecake, I'll go get it. I try not to keep a lot of it in the house. So if, if I want to go get something sweet to make it a destination, to make it a thing, you know, so that it's not in this house. And you yeah, mean, I'm not mean like Carla Hall says celebration food. Yes. Celebration food. That's right. Carla Hall. Cause even Carla Hall's like loves her like mac and cheese, but she can't eat it every day. Right. So that has been a really good, a way to help with that. And I do feel better. You know, I mean, I love some of that food. It is so good going down, but afterwards it's not, there's some foods that you just cannot eat anymore. Like, I'm like, right. oh my gosh, like I, I was with my family uh, last weekend the, and we had a get together and someone made chili with kidney beans. I cannot eat kidney beans. Really? I they can't your do it. Oh my gosh. I was in so much pain. And I just said, I, I can't, I have got to know that I cannot eat kidney beans. I've got to look and see if they're in something. I can't do it. It's not, it's not worth the pain. So for, <laughs> sometimes it's worth the pain. Sometimes it's if that not. is not, if, if I'm going to have pain, it's going to be cheesecake pain or it's going to yeah. be. And I, I would actually love to hear from the listeners um, yes. what foods they have noticed as they get older and hit midlife and beyond no longer are their friends. For me, it's red meat. I can't eat steak. Oh yeah. I can't. Yeah. I haven't eaten a steak in probably 10 plus years. Oh, wow. I used to love steak. Um, but so if you do, if you want to share, cause we love, um, mm-hmm. all this information, just email us at hot flashes, cool topics at gmail.com. Let us know what you can no longer eat. Um, because you know, we, we want to commiserate with you. Cause yes. Yeah. And you know, honestly, alcohol, not always our friends. Um, I know. I know. Yeah. Cause it's got a lot of sugar in it. Too. It does. And I love my wine, but it does. It just has a lot mm-hmm. of sugar. And you know, um, another, 
uh, thing that I know my husband, he did was he started doing more like bourbon because he looked up, he was, <laughs> first it was bourbon and Diet Coke. And then he just dropped the Diet Coke. And, it's now just it's, and now it's just a little bit of bourbon because it doesn't have, well, I shouldn't say John Garrett. It is not a little bit of bourbon, but, <laughs> but um, it, it is less calories, you know? So if you're wanting a little bitty drink or something, but of course, when we did the Dugan and Dane. Um, yes, one oh, of our 12 days of holiday. They had that sugar cube in there. And I'll tell you, those old fashions were really good. <laughs> and I'm like, but there was a sugar cube and, uh, you know, an orange slice, but they were pretty good. I was trying to find one of our um, uh, people in our group put up a really good post today. And I'm trying to find that post. Well, um, you find the post. Uh, I'll, yes, I'll you let go people ahead. Know, since you mentioned Dugan and Dame. Um, we are still in the midst of our 12 days of holiday giveaways, guys. As of today, we are on day four, which is Kindra. Um, when this airs, we'll be on day five, which is cucumber clothing, which is a really great line of clothing for women. They have this volcanic ingredients that um, it, it'll absorb the hot, the night sweats, which I'm going to now be purchasing. Um, and you travel well, you barely have to wash it. It's worth, I believe it's worth $399. So. And one of the benefits additionally, besides the fact that it's a great giveaway is that it's international. So it can be shipped pretty much anywhere, which a lot of ours can't be. So that's going to be on today, Wednesday and Thursday, Thanksgiving. So if you guys want to enter that, go to our website, hotflasheskooltopics.com. You will see the page where on the front page where it says 12 days of giveaways and just click there and enter. Or you can check out our Instagram, which is hotflashes and cool topics. Yes. Yeah, so did you find I, it? I did. I did. A woman, um, she was in our group. And I mean, I really am feeling for this person. She was saying that she was 45 at the time that she was, anybody could help her with um, medication and their horrible side effects that she's been ha having. She went to her doctor when she was about 45 and she said she just was having a mental breakdown and her doctor never once mentioned menopause at all and chalked it up to anxiety and put her on medication. She gained 30 pounds, had traumatic nightmares, extreme exhaustion. She, it, this was after the medication. So she right. really felt that it had to do with the medication. Then she just quit desperate and went cold turkey, which is kind of scary. Yeah, and you don't want to do that. People. You don't want to do that. And she, she, you know, realizes that said, but her hot flashes just got terrible. Um, and then she's up every day at five. Uh, she falls asleep with no aid. She, when she went off though, she just said her motivation is back. She feels great. And she doesn't feel that she can tolerate medication. So that's, you know, every person's individual, but she said she's just wanting some natural alternatives. And we there. do have an episode on that. We have an yes. episode on natural alternatives to menopause, which you guys can check out in our list. Our um, Facebook group, since Bridget mentions it, has a great group of women. We're just about 4,000 women in our group. And you can ask anything. I mean, we had mm -hmm. someone ask about sex stuff the other day and was not embarrassed to do so because it's a safe place. It's only women and we can all relate to what you're going through. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll actually send her the link or if you could just send her, the send link her the link to, for the, to episode. the episode. I'll find that. Let me take a picture. So I don't forget to do that. So yeah, I will try to and find that. We link, also have, and we also have, um, that, expert Jennifer Harrington coming on a Revel episode. Revel is the online platform for women over 40. We have a group called Hot Flashes and Cool Topics there. And we're doing a six month series on menopause and positive aging. So I believe January or February, Jennifer is a naturopath. She's going to be coming on talking about natural solutions to menopause. Right. So we are trying to get the information out there, guys. You know, our personal experiences, if you take away something from what we just talked about, great. If it yeah. helped you at all to know that we are right in it with you, because we, this is why we started this podcast, because we have, we have experienced what you are going through. We are still in some cases experiencing right. what you're yeah. going through. Yeah. And, and there's just not a lot out there. And, and we've talked to some wonderful people that are really trying to get the word out, trying to start groups, trying to start um, conferences to get the word out and 
to better educate our doctors. I'm, I'm not trying to slam our doctors. Right. There's some excellent, excellent doctors. doctors. The fact is the doctors themselves have received very little education when it what comes it, like to like an hour, yeah, credit it's, hour it, in, it's, in med it's school. So, yeah. Just nothing. Like you, you will notice when you go to your gynecologist, there's everything about having a baby up there, but there is nothing about menopause up there. And Great Britain has really done some fantastic work with the, uh, the menopause is it movement. They're yes. getting the posters out, the campaign. They've been on parliament. Um, now they're changing the laws. They're, they're changing, changing the, the laws. It's fantastic. I saw um, a lot of our, the people in um, Great Britain where Rod Stewart's wife, Penny Lancaster showed up for the uh, thing at, when they were going before parliament, Penny Lancaster was out there with her poster, Good. you know, ready to go. And it, I'm so thankful for people like that that come out, uh, people that have a voice. Uh, I'm thankful to all the people that have been on our show that have come out to share their experience, um, to talk about this. Just so many of them just taking their time to be on our show and share experiences with us and what they're doing to get the word out that yes, I'm just so thank grateful. You. Yes. yes. Thank yeah. you. And we're, you know, Bridget and I are excited for 2022. We really want to be the voice for women in midlife and beyond. You know, there are some great products out there. There are some great businesses out there, some great medical, but we want to be the voice of the women who are out there with this experience and say, I want you to answer this question. I want you to explore this option. We want to be that voice for the women who listen to our show, the women who are going through perimenopause and menopause, remember you can always email us with questions at topics at gmail.com. We are really going to try to hone in on what women in midlife and beyond want to hear, want to know. And those emails help us so much. Like for example, this episode, we had so many emails and requests from women saying, we just want to hear you guys. We just want to hear you talk about your own experience, have some fun, you know, because Bridget and I talk all the time, not, you know, this is, yeah. <laughs> this is our show, but we talk about everything. We could do yeah. a you know, seven hour show. You don't want to hear seven. Hours. You don't want to hear us. But we will yeah. try in 2022 to really, you know, share some more of our personal life with you guys. Sure. And, because again, mm -hmm. we are in that demographic. This is us. We yeah. Know. And we need to there get a, a show yeah. called there, <laughs> Oh, really? Oh my. Yeah. But the, it, we would just love to hear from you yes. about this. And we just want to get the word out. And so many women coming together to make this important, to not really make it the butt of jokes. Um, and I mean, I know I joke about what happens to me. Maybe that just helps me deal with it better. Right. Yeah. But, you know, when you hear maybe some man or something say something that is not really funny, they haven't gone through it themselves, but we need it to be taking, uh, taken a little more seriously and acknowledged and helped because, you right. know, if, and I love men, I love my husband, I have a son, I had a dad, <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> so yeah, I love, I'm not, I'm not trying to, but you do know um, that if men had, were going through something like this, that it would have been addressed a long time ago. Oh my ago. gosh. There would yes. be a little pink pill. There, there would be, be, it wouldn't be a pill. blue pill. It'd be a little pink pill. Yes. And you know, we, there are so many aspects to midlife, not just menopause. There's, you know, mental health, there's travel, there's friendships. And we try to talk about all of that stuff because everyone is going through it. And, and we want this to be a place where you feel it's a community and, and that we are talking your language, so to speak. Um, we want to remind you guys the 12 days of giveaways is upon us. We are on day, day five, five. Yeah. The episode, once this episode airs, we also have our gift guide and black Friday is coming up guys. We have some specials that you want to check out. I just sent down an email, um, about some black Friday deals, but we're going to post them on Instagram. Uh, for many of the companies they're doing big black Friday. So you can go to our gift guide on the website, hotflashescooltopics.com. Click on a website, you know, click, go through it. It's over 30 pages. Find something you like. We have the website link right there and you'll have some Black Friday deals. So happy shopping yes. with that. Yeah. Thank you all for another just incredible year. I know we're not quite done with 2021, although a lot of people want to be. Um, <laughs> but Bridget and I just, we learned so much for the show. We have gained so many new friendships. We are so uh, just, we are so grateful 
Mm-hmm. And it's just such a blessing. And we, I wouldn't want to do this with anyone else. But you, Virgil, oh, so. thank you. Me you either. Go. I'll tell you what, I, it just worked out great. So it yes. has been incredible. And thank goodness for our accents, because apparently everyone loves that they can tell <laughs> the difference. Tell about, I think that was one of our comments on something is like, I love these accents. And I'm like, a little bit country, a little bit city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends, whomever you may be sharing the day with. Enjoy the parade. Yes. <laughs> enjoy it all. Wait, wait for Santa to come. Uh-huh. And then for, me, for my family, they know Black Friday means I will be sitting in one position on the couch <laughs> shopping for all of, I don't pay full price for anything. Oh, shopping no, she for- is <laughs> Miss. She is so funny, guys. She will enter cool. anything for free. If it's for free, she is going to find I it. I love it. You could send, you could do a giveaway for a pen and I'd be like, she would enter it. I, I mean, oh, it. It, podcast conferences. I just, <laughs> I just bring t-shirts to her because mm-hmm. I don't like how, t- I don't look good in t-shirts. I, well, so, the way I'm sweating, I need as many as I can get. Yeah. I just go get more, give them to her. My daughter doesn't wear the same size as me and she's in Austin. So I give them to Colleen. I got and three. I, my kids wear them. She gives them to <laughs> her daughters and herself and it yeah. works out great. So. And I think that's why we, we go so heavy on this 12 days of giveaways because I just love giveaways and I love I sharing stuff with people. And I love getting the brand names out there because if you didn't know about it to get it for free and try it. But again, all of these brands also are going to have great Black Friday deals. Yeah. Yes. Just yes. Just so check them out. Check them out. Yeah. Make sure you're following us on all forms of social media. Make sure you send your email to um, hotflashescooltopics.com. There'll be a little pop-up and you will know every day of the giveaway because we still have some amazing, we're not even halfway there guys. And we have had hundreds and hundreds oh, yeah. of people enter this year. It's been crazy. It's been crazy. It's been great. I'm so happy yeah. to see it. It, and I hope that you win and I hope that you enjoy what you've won. So. Yes. And if you don't win, I hope you find a really good Black Friday deal. That That's makes right. You want to buy it anyway. That's right. So, <laughs> so guys, thanks again. Um, we hope you enjoyed this episode. So <laughs> have an awesome day and we will talk to you guys soon. Bye.